Hello internet, in this video we are going to work on a rim cutout shader. And so what I mean by that is it's going to be a normal cutout shader, but it's going to cut out based on the color of the vertex we're using. And the reason we're doing that is so that we can animate it with a particle system. And then around the edges we're actually going to use, we're actually going to render an emissive color. So it'll look like whatever we're, we're drawing is getting sort of cut and like dissolving and there's some sort of magical border around what's cutting it out. Uh, at least that's the idea. Uh, so this is just a basic standard surface shader. Uh, we're going to call this our rim cutout. Sure, that, that'll work. We can call it that for now. Uh, and so what we need to do first is add a color to our inputs, which we can do like so. And so this will take the vertex color and actually uh, plug it in as the color uh, in our input so that our surface shader, uh, the surface, can actually read it. And so just to kind of give a really quick example of that, let's pull out that uh, color we were using and actually just use the default color. And so this should actually be able to be used for something. Uh, let's see here. Rim material. I, I guess that works. Uh, let's apply that. That's just the easiest way. Just click and drag. Or not. There we go. And let's apply that to, say, our cube over here. So I'm just using the same scene from our uh, projectile trajectory calculations. And so now we have a rim material. That's super, super boring. <laughs> um, let's actually do a, that's not how I would get a particle system. Let's do a particle system. So we have a whole bunch of particles. Let's change what we're drawing here and actually make it a mesh. Uh, so now we're rendering a cube. And let's actually use our rim particle shader. Why, you're looking kind of weird. Why do I get the feeling they're always facing me? This is really, really weird. Oh, world. There we go. Okay, fixed it. Uh, the render alignment was for the view, which meant they were all kind of billboarding and facing us. We didn't, we don't, we don't want that. So here is our particle majiggy. Now, the cool thing is all I did was make it so that it supports color over life or vertex color. And when you use uh, Unity's particle system, when you change the color, it should change the color. Well, that worked well. As you can see, it's definitely changing the color and we're not not getting anything at all. So I have officially broken it. Oh, why? Did, oh, ha. So Visual Studio is doing its I'm not going to save your file thing, even though it says at the bottom there that it's saved. It didn't save. Um, there's some weird thing where ReSharper says it saves and Visual Studio is like, nah. So wasn't saving, which is why that wasn't working. Uh, and it wouldn't have compiled anyway because we didn't actually use the input. Uh, just referencing color wouldn't have existed, so that wouldn't have worked anyway. This should be red. And it is. So I'm going to change this back to white. And now you'll see the color over lifetime actually is affected by this. Now, we're not going to use this at all. The only thing I'm going to use is that color, the red, green, and blue, are going to be the edge emission. Uh, so that's going to be what's emitting around the edge of our cutout. And then the alpha transparency is actually going to be what affects, uh, what affects the cutout. So as this fades out, as the transparency reduces here of this color, 
that's actually going to make it cut out more and more of this from our mask, which we're also going to use. Uh, so, I suppose the easiest way to do this is actually like this. Uh, and so we're actually going to use our texture, our cutout texture. I'm going to use the main texture here because this is mostly an example uh, and we'll, we can tweak this later. I'll probably update it after that. Uh, but really what we're trying to do is we need a we need a mask that we can use to actually cut this out because I don't want it to just fade the entire thing out at once. That doesn't really work. Uh, so what we're going to do is actually pull out the alpha here and the alpha for our color. And so this result here, this fixed uh, clip, I guess we could just call it, is going to automatically clip this if uh, our alpha is less than the, or is, yeah, is less than the uh, texture alpha. So if that falls below it, then we have our clip here, uh, our clip value, and then we can just feed it into a clip function, which is going to actually clip this. So we'll save that. And then we should get that. Uh, we lost some lighting, it looks like. Interesting. Yeah, it's now all flat. Oh, ha. Huh. We probably should fix some compile errors. That'd be a good idea, wouldn't it? We're not going to have any alpha transparency, so I'm going to leave that as one. Uh, so we're going to get something a little bit different here. Ah, our albedo color is actually going to be our input. Uh, no, sorry, we're going to we're going to refactor this a bit. So I'm going to take our texture, plug that into a fixed four uh, for this will be our just color like so we're going to read that out and actually use our color dot alpha here in our clip value but then for our albedo texture we or for our L albedo we're actually going to pull out the rgb values here so that texture is actually all four channels are being used the alpha is used to define where when we should clip and then the red green and blue channels are used to actually give us a texture and a color. So if we go back to this after I actually make sure I save, that should clean up those. Uh, and we do not have a texture, so everything is clipped. That's probably not what we want. <laughs> so let's add a texture, and I have a whole bunch of things here. I don't really know if any there that looked handy. I'd prefer something a little bit smoother though. <laughs> I'm not really sure if I have anything that's a little bit smoother. Bricks, clouds, clouds should work. Uh, so you can see it is cutting everything out over time. So if I select this, you can actually see as our particles move up into the sky. They slowly like disintegrate and just kind of become more and more transparent. And that's sort of the effect we're going for. But we don't have that glow around the edges. So if you're in a completely like dark room, I want these to be visible and glow. Uh, so what we need to do is for some set of values greater than uh, zero, but uh, less than one, because if it's one, it will just be everything we need to actually set the uh, the color and override that to be something else. And so what I'm going to do is grab a, a rim glow radius. Sure, a rim glow radius. And this will be a range from zero to one uh, because those are 
the only values that we can actually use. And let's set this, let's default this. So 0.1% or 0.1 F, 0.1, ah, we don't need that F, but 0.1. So a tenth of the image will actually already have that glow on it. And then it will just expand or contract down. So using that then, we should be able to either take this color here or the other one or our glow. And so we need to create some sort of function where when it's between zero and our rim glow amount, we want to select this color or this uh, input color dot RGB. Otherwise we want this color. And I don't know entirely how we're going to do that, but we're going to figure it out. <laughs> Let's do a float of our rim glow radius. Cool. So that'll actually pull it in uh, and actually set it there. So we're actually getting our value in. And now the hard part. <laughs> Let's see here. We can do some sort of addition here which means clip value uh, multiplied by our color RGB plus a one. Let's do the, uh, let's do the maximum of zero. So it can't go into the negative numbers and get us some weird thing and start like subtracting uh, this rim glow, we don't, we really don't want that. Uh, but what we can do is say, if it's above zero, we want it to be our clip value. Or uh, actually, no, we want it to be our rim, our rim glow radius minus the clip value. Uh, divided by the rim glow radius. So that should get us a value between 0 and 1 inside of this uh, range. I think. Uh, this needs to be a division. That might not work. I may have oversimplified that, but we'll we'll see what we get. Uh, if it doesn't work, we're going to get something interesting and who knows, maybe that's what we want. <laughs> so let's do a input color dot RGB and that will be our glow color. And so if I bring this in and actually save it this time, we should see a red glow around the outside and we do neat. So you can actually see it kind of uh, disintegrate around the outside, which I guess that's what we want. So huzzah, it works. Uh, now the hard part, what if we take our directional light and turn it upside down? That's not going to work. That might. So now we have all of these really black uh, cubes. And so this is the hard part. We want these to actually glow. Uh, cool thing, Unity actually gives us that ability. We can actually just plug in uh, o.emission. That may not be the right name for that, but we're actually just going to want this value, which I can just copy and paste for now. And hopefully we'll see that it actually works. And then we can go back and actually make it do the right thing. And this should also tell us if everything is happening as we would expect. So I can actually pause our, our particle effect and we can kind of inspect this and say, yes, this is what I want or no, this doesn't look right. Uh, and luckily it, it does look right. I'm also going to make this whole thing uh, red entirely. So we don't have that fade there. This way it just stays red. 
Uh, and then the only the only thing we're dealing with here is transparency. But you can kind of see the disintegration happen. <coughs> and it looks quite good, actually. So we don't it doesn't go across the entire thing, which is what I was concerned about, is it doesn't span the entire uh, mesh. Just the edges have this uh, effect applied to them. And so this is obviously super fast, but you sort of get the idea. This way we can actually fade things out or kind of disintegrate objects just using a mask and this uh, vertex color, which particle systems give us a really quick way to modify that. So I don't know. I thought this would be interesting and I think there's a lot of uses for this. I know I'm going to be using something very similar to this and it's simple. So bonus there. <laughs> but yeah, that, that's really all I wanted to get done is just this. So I'll leave it here. And if you guys have any suggestions on where we could take this or ideas for other videos, let me know in the comments and I will definitely look into those. Other than that though, that's it for this video. So till next time, see you internet.